And today we have, uh, as you already know, a very uh, important uh, beginning of, of the series. But for this, I will give you uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Ludmila Laskova. So please. <laughs> Thank you, Israel. Uh, so good evening. On behalf of the Department of General Linguistics at Palatsky University in Olomouc, I would like to say welcome to the official opening of International Semiotics Institute, ISI. We are very excited. Thank you all for coming and being with us, sharing this moment with us today. Uh, I think it was just a few months ago, six months ago, Professor Kalevi Kuhl called me and his voice was very serious. Uh, so I was worried I was in some kind of trouble. But then it turned out uh, that he wanted to propose to relocate ISI to Olomouc, uh, the Department of General Linguistics. So uh, here we are now. And uh, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Professor Ero Tarasti from Finland and Professor Dario Martinelli from Lithuania and to uh, Dr. Tel Bennett, the new head of the ISI. Uh, just some organization um, stuff. For those uh, on Zoom, I would like to ask you if you could uh, put your affiliation next to your name. Thank you very much. And we will now have uh, the introductory speeches. After that, we have 10 minutes break for the drinks and refreshments uh, right there. And after we will have the first semi salon lecture. And uh, after the lecture, you are all invited to join us uh, to the social dinner at the brewery Spatova Savski Pivovar. Thank you. Okay, so uh, for our first uh, speaker, we will have former director of the ISI, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, um, Dario Martinelli from uh, Kaunas uh, University. So please. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. And um, Dear founding director of the International Semiotics Institute, Professor Eero Tarasti, uh, dear new director, uh, Dr. Tyler Bennett, uh, uh, friends, uh, colleagues. Uh, um, I'm very happy uh, to be here as a transitional director of the, of the Institute and to um, pass on the, the torch of, uh, of the Institute from Kaunas University of Technology to uh, this uh, beautiful university in this uh, beautiful city. Uh, books like uh, movies, songs, uh, and many other works of art have uh, sometime the a special power to uh, uh, create a connection uh, with us and to appear to us uh, at the very moment when we need them. Um, and that is like uh, the beautiful moment where we really connect with them because they answer questions that we were wondering about at, the very, at that very moment. So I had one of such moments uh, in uh, 1999 when um, I read uh, uh, a book by uh, Bruce Chatwin called The Song Lines. Maybe some of you are familiar with, uh, with it. Uh, that year I had moved uh, uh, from my hometown uh, to uh, um, South Italy, South Italy to uh, Bologna to pursue my master's degree. And I was about to move from there to uh, Finland uh, to pursue my doctorate under the supervision of uh, um, uh, Aero. So we had met already with, uh, with Aero and it was agreed already. So in that period, I was, uh, I was reading uh, uh, that book, which uh, um, as, as a main theme, why do human beings uh, have uh, an urge to, uh, to travel, to move, to relocate, to find uh, uh, new homes. And uh, that resonated a lot to me at that particular point because I was exactly going to, uh, uh, to move to a, to a foreign uh, uh, country, a very, very distant one. I was full of uh, uh, concerns, full of fears. And um, mm, most of all, I was receiving a lot of pressure from my uh, uh, peers uh, in, uh, in my hometown uh, and also part of my family 
It's like, why are you leaving your roots? Uh, your roots are here. Uh, you can't escape your roots. There was this roots, roots, roots going on all the time. And I was always a bit uncomfortable with that metaphor because uh, honestly, I never felt like a plant. Uh, I feel very much an animal. I'm a mammal. I'm, a, I'm an ape for Darwin's sake. Uh, so I couldn't, I couldn't really relate, uh, um, uh, relate to that. On the contrary, I could always relate to the fact that uh, the place where we are born doesn't say much about what we are. We don't choose that. It's where we choose to live, where, wherever we lay our head, as the, as the song goes, that really defines home for us. And there's nothing uh, wrong about, uh, about changing home. It's okay to do that. This is the lesson I learned from, uh, uh, from that book, which was very useful at the time I was doing this, uh, um, this big change. So um, I remember that period when I was preparing this, uh, uh, this speech. And uh, therefore, I, I came up with this conclusion that uh, uh, the International Semiotics Institute is a traveling animal. Um, Eero will probably tell you more about uh, the story of the Institute uh, uh, later, but just briefly, you may or may not know that uh, the idea was uh, um, conceived in Canada of the Institute. And then right after that, uh, um, Eero had uh, the opportunity, the enthusiasm and the commitment to bring the Institute to Finland. And so here it was, uh, ISI having, uh, uh, having a new home from Canada to uh, to Finland, and it flourished for many years under uh, Aero direction and his, uh, and his team. And not only ISI had a new home, but one of the greatest achievements, I think, of, the, uh, of this first long uh, phase of uh, ISI's history was how ISI was making everybody feel at home, everybody who would visit um, the, the Institute for uh, the various events that were organized, particularly the Imatera Congress. All of us who have been there, and there, there are a few here in this room, um, they remember that sense of friendliness, uh, familiarity, uh, cozy atmosphere. And that to say nothing about all the academic achievements, you know, the, the tons of publications and Acta Semiotica Fenica and the organization of the World Congress in 2007 and many other achievements which I won't, uh, uh, I won't list here. Then in 2013, um, some of this uh, um, institutional uh, uh, nonsense that uh, uh, modern days universities have to uh, face more and more often in this uh, crazy process of uh, corporatization of um, academic institutions, uh, it wasn't any longer possible to, uh, to keep the Institute in, um, uh, in Finland. So it was time to leave to find a new home. And what I learned from Bruce Chatwin's book is that when it's time to find a new home, it's also okay to find a new home. So here we were um, in uh, Kaunas to have, again, the opportunity, the enthusiasm, and the commitment to uh, welcome ISI in, um, uh, in Kaunas and create a new home. And uh, we were very uh, uh, determined to um, <clears throat> reflect that same sense of coziness, familiarity, friendliness that uh, Aero had managed to establish. So we are very proud of that, uh, along with, uh, with the academic achievements, which we are equally proud. So we also produced many publications, uh, the Springer series. Uh, we also hosted the World Congress, uh, other events. Uh, and it's very, very nice uh, still to this day um, recently, there was a World Congress in Thessaloniki. Is there are still people coming to me and saying how well they felt during their time in um, uh, in Kona. So we felt that we uh, we achieved that. And then what? So more of this institutional nonsense happened in uh, Lithuania as well. Uh, so again, uh, um, our leadership, or uh, uh, you know what we no normally refer to as the system. Uh, didn't appreciate the value that uh, uh, we had created, just like uh, they did uh, in, um, uh, in Finland. So again, it was time to leave and it was okay uh, to, find, um, uh, to find a new home. So thanks to the mediation and the facilitation of uh, Professor Kaleri Kuhl, who is uh, listening now and whom I would like to, uh, to thank very much, um, Tyler and uh, Ludmila uh, appeared and they had Yes, the opportunity, the enthusiasm, and the commitment to welcome ISI. And I would also add the respect to uh, uh, welcome ISI, because one of the things that uh, 
had failed in my previous negotiations with other universities was exactly the idea of bringing ISI with that same identity, with that same spirit. And uh, I could feel already from the very early conversations with, uh, with Tyler and Ludmila that they very much meant, sincerely meant uh, to do that. So here we are in a place where I can see that this is already uh, being, uh, being enacted. I'm already feeling very cozy uh, here. So it's, a, it's extremely nice in that sense. Uh, and so again, home is not what our parents uh, decide what our spatial temporal circumstances assign to us, but it's really what we dream about, what we work hard for, and what we, uh, what we achieve. So in this, I would like to just concluding, thank uh, a few people. I can thank many, but uh, I will just limit myself to, um, uh, to a few of them. First and absolutely foremost, I want to uh, thank uh, my team, if I may call it my team, the people I have uh, I worked with. Some of them are, are here, some of them are not. Uh, uh, one of them, unfortunately, is no longer with us, uh, uh, Professor Andy Stables, uh, which Aline will have the, the chance to, um, uh, to remember. And uh, I can add one thing, not only we gave ISI a new home, not only we made other people feel at home, but we were home. Uh, there was a very strong sense of uh, uh, family uh, during uh, those years, which we still keep to some respect uh, uh, nowadays. So it was um, uh, a pleasure, it was a, a privilege and a honor to work with them. So thank you very much. Um, I want to thank Professor Eero Tarasti and all his uh, team in Finland for all the various reasons that you, Eero, know that you did for me from being my mentor and friend, but also exactly for having in the specific of this uh, uh, topic today, for having taught me exactly how important it is to give this sense of coziness uh, to people and how this is important, not just at personal level, but also at professional level as well. And finally, I want to thank uh, uh, Tyler and uh, Ludmila and all your team. I had already the pleasure to meet uh, uh, some of them, so I can see really that the Institute is uh, in great hands. So I want to thank you for um, welcoming uh, the, the Institute and for uh, being so eager to, uh, to continue the tradition. I'm sure you will add more of your own, which I very much uh, uh, look forward uh, to. Uh, we just brought some very small tokens uh, uh, for you just to, as a reminder of the things that we, uh, uh, we produced uh, during uh, our uh, tenure in, um, in Kaunas, some of the gadgets that we were uh, producing. And so my wish for you is uh, exactly what uh, we decided at home is, uh, is like. So I wish you uh, beautiful dreams. Uh, I wish you hard work uh, and I wish you great achievements. Thank you very much. So <clears throat> thank you, Professor Martinelli. And uh, now uh, we have very good friend, uh, Dr. Alin Olteanu. <laughs> I, think, I thought it was going to be my turn, then you said very good friend. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Well, I'm very honored to be here. And I'm uh, deeply grateful to Ludmila, Tyler, and their team for gathering us. I'm, uh, it's so nice to see many great friends, some here, many online. And very exciting to see many new faces, apparently uh, interested, excited about the work of ISI. And looking forward, I hope we'll all get a chance to meet. I am an alumnus of the International Semiotics Institute, having been a postdoc during 2016-2018 at this institution, where it was based at Kaunas University of Technology after, under Dario's directorship. Before else, I would like to thank the founders and the former directors of the ISI, uh, professors uh, Marcel Danesi, Ero Tarasti, Dario Martinelli, and many others for their impor important contribution to the institutionalization of semiotics and for bringing the ISI uh, the prestige it currently enjoys. Their work to set up and develop this platform greatly boosted my professional career. And this is not about me, I'm just an example of uh, the impact that this institute has in uh, offering an institutional platform for uh, semiotics to academically develop. Many thanks, 
many special thanks, Dario, of course, for your excellent research supervision during the time and for the friendship we enjoyed since. I would not have, and uh, Dario already mentioned Andy, I would not have arrived to work at this prestigious institute if I would not have had the privilege to have my doctoral work supervised by Andrew Stables. Andy, as friends know him, passed away early this year. He was one of the most prominent semioticians and philosophers of education of late and a pioneer of semiotics of education. He is deeply loved by many whose lives he touched as he also worked at uh, the ISI and, and as many of us hold him dear, I would like please to ask you to keep with me a minute of silence for Andy as our beloved ISI colleague and a great mentor and friend. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Israel. Uh, you can, uh, on uh, the screen, you can see an obituary for Andrew Stables on the inter website of the International Association for Semiotic Studies. At the moment, I'm a researcher and publications coordinator at the Kette Hamburger College Cultures of Research of Erwete Aachen University. I apologize for the long German names. This is a center for advanced studies in philosophy, sociology, and history of science and technology. It was founded last year for a large grant from the German Ministry of Research and Education to foster interdisciplinary exchange with scholars from the natural and engineering sciences on topics like complexity, lifelikeness, and emergence. I mentioned this because it gives one idea of what a career in semiotics built through the ISI might look like. Those of us who work in semiotics are often asked, what do we actually do? We are quite suspicious. I was asked twice in an airport. So we tackle and shed new light on the important questions, on the important philosophical and scientific questions that the current times of crisis impel on us. That is pretty much what we should be doing. And as such, I want to congratulate the management of Palatsky University and of this faculty for having the insight and foresightedness, I would say, to host ISI here. Of course, that would not be possible without the work of Ludmila and her team, who proved that semiotic research is important. Ludmila, Tyler, Claudio, Israel, colleagues, I thank you for bringing ISI to this rich intellectual environment of diversity and inclusion, where, where there is not only good local beer, but also good local wine. Well done. This accommodates a wide variety of vices that us academics have. Contemporary, highly competitive and capitalist academia made highly functioning substance addict, addicts of most of us. Where the excellent Moravian beer and wine will not be enough, Slivovice will help, surely. <laughs> Leaving jokes aside, I would like to share my opinion with you all that Palaski University shows great research management for bringing the ISI here. Under the directorship of Tyler and the higher supervision of Lud Ludmila, no doubt, ISI will pay off for this university. It will grow, it will become an international hub of research in all our modes, it will produce great social and academic impact and it will foster innovation, both in the genuine sense and the technical sense that European funding bodies want to see and fund. 
So I wish the ISI to stay like Dario. I wish to the ISI to stay for a long time in all modes, as it will prosper here. And I also wish it that when the time comes, it moves again or expands. Through its habit to move from one host to another, ISI is acquiring, I would say, the right entrepreneurial spirit for the digital nomad age in which we find ourselves and the academic dragons that come with it. Thank you. Thank you, Alin. And uh, now we move to the online uh, speakers. So I would ask uh, Professor Susan Petrilli uh, to uh, give us a few words. And uh, we made you co-host in case you want to share a screen or something. No, no, it's okay. Okay, uh, fine. Um, well, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for, for this initiative. Uh, and for the possibility of sharing, uh, being with you. Uh, and also thank you for whoever thought to show the public, because it's always a problem when we're online, you know, we just, we don't get a perspective. It's difficult to get a perspective on the context. So thank you for the thoughtfulness. Um, yes, I'm, uh, I think this is really wonderful, exciting that, um, uh, EC has been relocated. Uh, um, I must say, I'm pleased it's in Europe too, because that makes you know it possible to continue our travels easily, even physically. Um, I think um, it, it's um, uh, it's a difficult time in history, um, a very difficult time. And the fact, as we all know, and I think as semioticians, uh, our job is to interpret the signs of our times um, and, and the signs of our social world today, our human world, uh, maybe, uh, maybe read as symptoms. We could even speak of social symptomatology of uh, the difficulty, the danger, the threat that uh, the world is, is uh, the world, the human world is presenting to life, human and non-human. Um, the fact that uh, Dario was rightly talking about, you know, the, this administrative uh, stupidity, I would say, that puts organizations like this into difficulty, uh, that's another sign of the times. Thank goodness, thank goodness, semiotics, or better, the people doing semiotics, the science, the people who study, the people who research, um, the intellectual life, what can I, you, know, you, us, resist the fact that this journey is continuing, I would say is a journey of resistance, a journey of life, showing that we can continue, that we, that we must continue proposing new worlds, a new form of humanism, uh, that we must continue uh, giving voice to the other uh, and look after the health of semiosis, which is to look after the health of life. So the fact that the travel continues in spite of the difficulties, uh, and involves us all together, uh, I think is a very positive sign that we need in such difficult times uh, as these are. Uh, and I like uh, what Dario Martinelli was saying about uh, how uh, identity, let's say in my language, is assigned to us at birth, we don't choose where we're born, what language we're born into, what system of values, what culture, what geopolitical allocation. It's assigned rightly, right? It's assigned to us. And then we can continue our journeys and we can travel across the world um, as the Aboriginal, Australian Aboriginals did, uh, mapping their song lines. This, however, also, you know, and, and this is good, and this is what I mean by otherness, the force of otherness that calls the journey forth uh, and that enables the journey of communication, the journey of life to continue. 
and we continue resisting. At the same time, you know, there's another face of the journey, the journey of forced migration today, which is no longer the journey as I have experienced it, moving from Australia to Europe or Dario, from Italy uh, to uh, Latvia. This is another kind, I'm thinking of another kind of journey, migration, which is the forced migration. Um, migration, which is no longer that phenomenon that fits the paradigm immigration, emigration, immigration. We're talking about masses of people looking for a home, looking for a place to stay, looking for hospitality. So that is one example, but I mean, you know, we have the war in Ukraine, we have the ecological crisis, many, many signs, symptoms of crisis, humanitarian crisis, ecological emergency. And it's good that in spite of this, we have a new place for easy, which I read as a sign of resistance, a creative sign, um, a sign for the future, which shows us that we must continue our work and spread the work and continue traveling uh, as uh, we are doing together. And, and thanks to the initiative now of younger generations. So thank you. And thank you for, for involving me in the initiative. I'm very happy with Augusto Fonso to be part of all this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we we will move on now with our next uh, speaker, uh, and I'm very uh, happy to introduce him. Uh, he's my mentor and very good friend, very dear friend, uh, Professor Kalevi Kul. Greetings, greetings from Tartu, uh, dear friends. Uh, uh, there you can even see you. There are many of them, many of us here collected. Uh, in university today, uh, it's really fascinating to observe the institutional development of semiotics. Uh, and it's uh, so good to be a part of it. Uh, geographically, the route from Toronto to Imatra to Kaunas to Olomouc, uh, geographically, that route goes through Tartu. And uh, we are really proud of that. Uh, Imatra conferences in 1990s were re played really very important role for our Tartu semioticians. Uh, it was uh, not so very, uh, well, easy time for uh, Estonian science those years, um, uh, and uh, uh, that was a great help from the International Semiotics Institute, who they, uh, Erotarasti, invited us uh, to uh, Imatra conferences. We were there many times, and that was uh, the, pretty much a basis uh, for uh, be becoming a member of this. Uh, international network of semioticians, of global semiotics. Uh, and keeping this network is uh, a major task, major function of International Semiotics Institute. And I'm glad to see that uh, this task is continuously important also now uh, when the International Semiotics Institute is in Czechia. So, Vivat, Kresset, Floret, International Semiotics Institute in Olomouc, Czechia, we will stay together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now uh, we will go on with the next speaker, uh, our dear president, <laughs> uh, Professor Paul Cobley from Middlesex University, London. Thank you, Israel. And also, um, I should say that I'm, I'm 
absolutely delighted to um, have been asked to to do this because it gives me an opportunity to say thanks very briefly. Um, I knew about the ISI um, in its uh, Toronto incarnation in the early 1990s when I was a rookie academic, um, and it was a bit of a legend. Um, and I, I then found out about um, how it was now helmed by uh, Aero Terasti. Um, and if you think about it, it would be easy to consider the ISI in terms of a cult of personality. Buisak, you know, a very strong personality. Terasti, an absolute giant. Uh, Martinelli, uh, you know, fantastic successor. And now Tyler and, uh, and Ludmilla, who are um, certainly not without uh, personality. However, I think that the key things that they have done and the key things that characterise the tenure, even the, the, the new incumbents, um, is that they have powerful teams behind them and strong teams, seemingly very well picked. I was privileged to meet in the 20 teens, the uh, team that were in uh, Kaunas. Uh, but in particular, I would like to, to make a... Um, I'd like to, to make a, a very brief tribute to um, the team in Imatra um, in the late 1990s and early 2000s. In particular, everyone will remember Maya Rossi, uh, who was a, an absolutely inspired uh, appointment by um, by Aero, and uh, and she was was fantastic. Maya Rossi uh, and Aero Tarasti ab absolutely um, furnished my career. But I think the 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 genius um, of the ISI is something to do with what Dario said earlier on. That's to do with uh, with the idea of of home. When you went to Imatra in particular, you were almost trapped for seven days in a hotel with people that you couldn't avoid. If there were people there that you didn't like, you had to speak to them. It was impossible. Luckily, most people did like each other. Which um, which was a, a, a bonus even after seven days of um, heavy discussion and lots of drinks in the evening, but um, but it, it gave a sense of the spirit of that uh, enterprise, the ISI. So um, I I already gave um, tribute to Tarasti personally at uh, the uh, event in Thessaloniki. So let's just move away from personality a bit. We've spoken about place. And I, th I think what I would like to um, to, to remember um, from the way that I was made so welcome and the way that my career was furnished by uh, ISI is the team. And I'm looking forward to seeing great things under the new team in Olomouc. Many thanks, everybody. Good to see so many people in Tartu and uh, at Palaki University as well. Take care. Thank you, thank you very much. And now uh, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Professor Ero Tarasti, former director of the ISI, please. <laughs> well, dear uh, Ludmila and Tyler and Ismail and, and uh, Dario and Alin and everyone here, all the Semiticians, maybe in Spain, but or maybe already somehow, and of course, my, my colleagues uh, online. Um, my contribution will be non verbal, it will be a series of pictures. Can you put the fir first one? Uh, no, still one before. First one was the rapids, I think, waterfall. Yeah, yes, okay, I'll be this. So, so I have uh, gathered some 25 pictures from the history of ISI in, in Finland. In, place called Imatra, which may be rather exotic for you. I remember once I got a message from a lady from Australia that um, I don't want to come to Sumatra every, every year because it's so, so far away. <laughs> well, but Imatra is in the eastern Finland. Where it is about 260 kilometers from Helsinki, and it's very close to the Russian borderline, so it has an exotic flavor. And um, that is the reason this uh, waterfall uh, and river walks, because uh, for that, uh, uh, Imatra was a um, major tourist attraction of the whole country through centuries, indeed. So, uh, waterfall is there is a station there, so it, it was stopped. This free, freely streaming water in 
1920s, and then birds stopped singing on that day when the, it was no longer. But they opened, this, opened the gates always for us semiticians, so that we can see them. Then next page, uh, no, it was this one, okay. So this is the castle <laughs> hotel. It's a large nouveau castle built in the early 20th century. And I must say, I have lived one year of my life in that tower <laughs> suite there. I counted really, it's one year, it's a long time. And we were in Imatra, in fact, uh, 35 years, from 88 to 2013. Did I correct, count correct, I think maybe. So it's a long period. Then next. Well, here are just some, some of the program notes. Uh, you see, in the middle, there is this um, modern cultural center, which was quite, quite new urban when we entered uh, by um, architect Sipila. So in fact, we had the meetings very much there in quite modern, modern context. So, and you see on the right side, um, in the rocks, there is the signature of the Brazilian emperor, Pedro uh, the second, who visited uh, Imatra in 1876, Pedro da, with the pseudonym Pedro da Cantara, okay. Thanks. Uh, here is from the founding meeting, some of the first people who came, you may recognize some familiar figures. <laughs> uh, there is Paul Buissac, Jean Yumiker Sebeok, Colwyn Trevarten from Edinburgh, Tom Sibiok, um, uh, Patanayak from India, and Ropo Sekoni from. And by the way, it was uh, established uh, by a col international collegium of 44 persons. Would like to hear who they were. I can read the. Uh, this very quickly, we may recognize some of them. Okay, there were these colors, Collegium founded. Lisa Block de Behar, Paul Buissac, Maria Lucia Santa La Braga, Jose Romero Castillo, Igor Chernov, Jean-Claude Gardin, Beatrice Casta Guarron, Linda Gorlé, Claudio Guerri, Yoshihiko Ikegami, Jürgen Dines Johansen, Walter A. Koch, Alexander Faidon Lagopoulos, Yu Cheng Li, Dean McCannell, Jacques Möschler, um, Michael O'Toole, Rick Pinkston, Roland Posner, uh, Debbie Prasama Patanayak, uh, Monica Rector, Joel Retorre, Fernand Saint Martin, Thomas E. Sibio, Ropo Sekoni, Anne Schuchman, Professor Srivastava, Giorgi Shepe, me, Terry Fredgold, Colin Trevathen, Salvatore Trigo, Patricia Violi, Vilmos Voigt, Gloria Witham, and Masao Yamaguchi. And then Peter Stockinger was nominated the assistant to the president. So that was the beginning. And um, uh, it had uh, three tasks which were put in the, in the um, uh, rules. It was, it was legalized in, according to Finnish society um, law. First, it should establish an international database of all teaching and courses events in the whole world globally. Second, uh, facilitate mobility of students Thirdly, um, it will sponsor and organize interdisciplinary conferences, workshops, courses, and so on. So there were uh, three tasks, and uh, where Thomas Sibiok, if you put the say, Thomas Sibiok here in front of the hotel, box hotel, Thomas C. Sibiok, the legendary Hungarian American scholar, remember, he was, he was, it was his idea, in fact, the, we have the ISI, and um, he had a very American idea that the whole globe was put in the so-called regional um, uh, areas and regional centers, which were um, Australia, Eastern Europe, Japan, East Asia, Latin America, North America, and Western Europe. And, and each center should provide information and bring it to, to Imatra database. In fact, it, this ambitious plan didn't function. <laughs> These regional centers did not, did not send information to Imatra. So we decided, well, let's then we, be, we become ourselves a center, like Levi Strauss proposed to me, <laughs> but quite young in Paris. And so we started to do the uh, symposia, uh, the summer, summer colleagues, summer symposia, and winter schools, which were mostly among us as Finns. So maybe next. Oh, well, here they are. Here are mostly French semiticians. Uh, this is the symposium, Gremas after Gremas. There is Anne Eno in the middle. And Eric Landowski on the right side, and Irman Barret behind him, and, and some other you may recognize. I remember even the next one. Yes, here are, like Caleb Kuhl said, the biosemiticians in Imatra. Caleb is in the center, and then uh, Winfried Nerd, uh, next, and then um, Klaus Emmeke, and uh, 
Estonia, yeah, there is yeah, Timolara, yes, yes, and uh, uh, Charles Pearson, I think, American Charles Pearson, and then uh, Søren Breer. So that was one. The biostimetics uh, started, so there, okay, then. Ah, here is from the Congress of uh, Musical Signification, French uh, professors of music and semiticians. Maybe this group is not so interested in this, but there are famous. Uh, that Professor Daniel Scharl, great philosopher in the middle, and uh, Marta Grabos from Hungary there, and, and, and um, Bernard Vecchione, and Costimir Anu, my colleague from Zorbon, and, and, and Eloise Duarte Valente from Sao Paulo, etc. Thanks. Uh, this is my doctoral seminar in musical semiotics in Imatra. You see very international students who came. I have been doing these doctoral seminars also for 30 years, about uh, 15 altogether. Last one was in Syros Island, where I am now running a, a cultural academy. So, but I, I can't <laughs> mention all the names, but it's very international indeed. The group. Thank you. Then, ah, well, uh, we had a lot of different themes of the symposium. This is identity and locality in the world. Of so the more enormous diversity of, of these topics which we had. Yes, thank you. Uh, sauna evening was obligatory. <laughs> so here we see Christian Bankov and uh, Paul Kobli and um, an Estonian lady and Kaya Kotov. But uh, I don't remember the Estonian. This name, but... Oh, yes, yes, thank you. thank you. Fine. Yes, and some um, uh, people from Finland, uh, Jacques Fontagny, you know, here, and in the middle, important lady, Rita Osukainen, who became a minister of education, and she put us to the state budget for, uh, for 35 years. Very important. And Professor Matti Kling and, and Eila, my wife here. Okay. In front of the castle, you may recognize these people here is. Uh, John Dealey and Brooklyn, Brooklyn Dealey, his wife, and Anne No, and Sister Vasik, who is present, I suppose, in front of the castle. Yes. Ah, here's my Greek assistant, Lazarus Papoutsis. He's now my assistant for, for my uh, Syros Island seminars. He's a semiotician from the Thessalonic University. Thanks. This is at the waterfall, a pavilion, a lower pavilion. You see there in the middle, Gerard Deledal. Uh, great pearl scholar and his wife. Uh, there between is um, um, Grigori Levington from Petersburg, then Eila in the middle, and then Claudio Guerri and uh, uh, Jose Pinol. All three ladies, there's Maya Rossi on the right, and Pirio Kukkone and Eila. Okay. Um, you must have had one great rest gourmet restaurant, one of the best of the whole country, called Buttenhof. It was once moved from Vipuri. The old Finnish town now taken by Russians. So, so it put in the first function. And here is a famous, famous pianist, Charles Rosen, sitting in the. He was playing uh, evenings gratuitly to us. And Professor Lu, uh, Louis Lower from Indiana and uh, his wife, um, Unni. Thanks. Uh, one very popular was about the gourmet semiotics and science of food, which he seems to be very fashionable nowadays. And so, this is the menu. Reconstruction of a dinner at, in 1894 in Imatra. So <laughs> exactly the same menu, we, we tried it. It was absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, once we celebrated the Finnish composer, Eino Rautavara in the church by Alvar Aalto of Three Crosses. This church is very famous worldwide. I, uh, I saw pictures when I, yes, in Minnesota, when it was Minneapolis, I went to the bookstore, heavens, the first book was in architecture, was Alvar Aalto Church or three crosses in Matra. So, and here, <laughs> Dario and Christian, and some, something from the existential semiotics between, maybe. Ah, this is something I, I just left to Tyler. Namely, we, we, have, we have on CD important uh, speeches. So this can be, you can see, here are speeches by Gremas, 1983 in Finland, Jyväskylä, Juri Lotman, filmed in um, early 1980s in, I think, in Tartu, Julia Kristeva in Helsinki. She's speaking English, note <laughs> for us. Thomas Sibiok, Jacques Fontanay, and so. So I, I leave one copy of this so that you, you may perhaps put it somewhere, okay? Ah, this is the closure. 
financiation. You see here, among other here the people, Solomon Marcus, who, who passed away some years ago. You know, Solomon Marcus was always in Imatra. He was our. Okay. I think that might be the end. Or, oh, hello, uh, this is um, okay. My colleague from the School of Defense, Professor Akim Ali Huftin. So we taught uh, semiotics to the soldiers and officers. In um, I hope it should continue now. So it's, it's very, <laughs> will be very important. So anyway, that's one application of semiotics in, in that. Ah, this is the uh, mayor Thomas Moilanen, who was very favorable. Okay, and then ah, all ended with the um, World World Congress in. Helsing and, uh, and Imata, so a Twin City Congress. This is in the City Hall of Helsing, the big reception there. And um, there should be see something. It was the next one. No, it was the end. Okay, maybe. Okay, that's so. Anyway, so no, thank you very much. So that was the history of the sign. And now we are looking forward to see how, how it will flourish here in, in uh, Olomouk or Olmuts. I just learned it was Olmuts earlier, so the name. Thank you so much and have a very great success in this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we will have a longtime collaborator of Thomas Sebeok, Professor Marcel Danesi. <laughs> Please, we, we cannot hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes, thank, thank you. you very much for having me. What a delight to be here in, amongst all friends. Um, Paul, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Susan and Augusto before that, Aero, uh, Kalevi and everyone there. Wonderful, wonderful to be uh, along with you, uh, here with you. Um, I'm glad, Aero, that I'm in none of those photographs that you took because it would have been shocking for me to see myself. But those were great times. And I think greater times are coming as, as has been implied by um, some of the talks here. I noticed in looking at um, works that are coming out now, they are delving right into the new substrata of digital culture. Um, and boy, do we ever need semiotics to go into it. And I see that uh, actually this started when I was in Tartu, and I think you were there as well, Paul, at that marvelous conference um, um, where I was the only one that could not use <laughs> PowerPoint. I had no clue what to do with it. Um, and one of the stu students in the audience says, you know, what a relief it is to not have to see thing through a digital screen, but to actually have someone talk to me face to face. Um, I started to realize then that the medium of communication, as Marshall McLuhan, one of my own professors here at the university, often pointed out, does affect the message. Um, we are changing the medium and therefore we are changing the message, not only the form of the message, the language used uh, through new media, the, um, the whole semiotic system from um, connotation to whatever on and forward, um, but the effects of this on the mind. It is uh, recently I've been really fascinated and in fact disturbed by the kinds of images and language that is coming out of the sphere of politics throughout the world. Um, having um, really become, being at university during the counterculture and hippie era, I always believe that once conquered, once you know, social injustices have been put by the side, they will never come back. Well, they come back. And um, unlike, my undergraduate days at the university, I now have, I think, the ability to understand that we have the tools, the tools to deconstruct, decipher um, the kinds of languages, um, uh, semiotic systems that are being thrown at us all the, all, all the time through the screen um, in their compressed form, which are changing the nature of how we understand each other. Um, I'm absolutely convinced that this attitude is being brought there by Tyler Bennett, who I had the, actually the, the delight and actual privilege to uh, be in contact with over the years 
um, when he was giving his course in Tartu. Um, and I do believe that the center of activity has shifted to several places. We don't have semiotics anymore in Toronto. I uh, um, retired about two and a half years ago and um, the university decided to put its um, efforts in other areas, particularly in the areas of artificial intelligence, perhaps not realizing that it is exactly in that area where semiotics can play a very important role in understanding what is going on um, in programming and in the development of intelligences of various kinds. Um, so it's not here anymore. And Paul mentioned meeting all these people in Toronto. Um, it was such a delight to have invited them here. We even had Umberto Eco give a course uh, in the Italian department. Why not, right? He was an Italian. Um, way back, and we had Tom Sibiak to give courses in the Italian department, because that was my home department at the time. Um, and I could tell that the students were absolutely fascinated by this topic, because it's open-minded. Um, it's open-minded in the sense that my opinion is as good as anyone else's. All we have to do is make the point through the apparatus of semiotic analysis. Um, I know this is going to be happening where you are now, because I saw it um, in its embryonic stages at that time in Tartu, the enthusiasm over this tool, which is a tool, perhaps not a discipline, uh, to use the word doctrine, today would seem somewhat anachronistic, but still is a doctrine, set of principles. Um, so I, I cannot really reinforce enough my wish that you there in Tartu, in the Czech Republic, in Bari for heaven's sakes, um, and probably in London as well. I don't know how your program is going, Paul, but with you there, it's probably flourishing. So these are the places. <laughs> Canada, finito. The US, sta finendo. <laughs> so, it's shifting to a new area of the world, an area which is now probably in a, in a zone of conflict for the next few years. And like never before, have we needed discourses uh, like the semiotic ones to help us understand ourselves and to conclude, I, would, I love this term that Susan Petrilli and Augusto Pons you have introduced, semioethics. You know, we've used semiotics to study advertising, and then the advertisers took it over to make advertising more effective. <laughs> we've used semiotics to help understand the literature. The literary critics took it over and made it their own. Why can we now not use semiotics to understand the nature of ethics? Ethics outside of moralism and outside of the, the opposite of moralism, the open libertarianism. Why can't we use semiotics to understand how ethics from the ancient world to today is the only guiding principles of how we should all interact? So I thank you, Susan and Augusto. As you know, I'm finishing a book on this <laughs> for Bloomsbury because you evaluated it and it'll be my, it's <laughs> such a pleasure to do it. Such an honor and such a delight. Grazie to everyone. Nice seeing all of you here and all the very best. Arrivederci. Uh, thank you. And uh, now for our last uh, speaker, the new director of the ISI, Dr. Tyler Bennett. Thank you very much. Thank you, Israel. I'll just say briefly, we are deeply honored to be graced with the presence of all these great thinkers. And we appreciate the great responsibility and the opportunity of hosting the ISI in Olomots. I want to thank Palatsky University as well, and Tartu University, and uh, Ludmila Latskova for helping to make this all possible, and to the audience and to the local students for coming and gracing us with your presence. And I will say that we cannot hope to surpass the achievements of the previous locations of the ISI. We can only hope to succeed you. And we'll do our best in that. 
I'll say also that it is, I'll repeat what numerous others have already said, it is all about the team, I guess. And my role as uh, director of the ISI is mostly symbolic because it's all about cooperation between our various team members and cooperation with the team members of the previous locations in Imatra and in Kaunas. And uh, along the same lines, I want to emphasize that um, if you look on the uh, website of the International uh, Association for Semiotic Studies, you will notice that there are a great number of semiotics associations, whether national or international. And one is uh, forced mm -hmm. to ask the question, well, what can an additional uh, institution or association actually contribute? And I will say that the ISI, in my vision, has a very specific role in this way, which is to facilitate better communication between the existing institutes and if there were a deficit, if there was a deficit, it would be what uh, of the previous uh, locations, it would be uh, what uh, Professor Tadarsky already mentioned is that the information sharing, which was supposed to be the main function of the ISI didn't necessarily work as well as it was supposed to, although at times it did. And so in this respect, we encounter another very pressing issue, which uh, Professor Petrilli mentioned, which is about uh, technology accelerating uh, technologies of information and communication uh, in the face of which we can take a, a variety of different stances some can be of resistance and paranoia and others can be of what a naive embrace but what we must understand is that in order for the isi to function in the way that it's supposed to we must embrace this technology and be conscious of it because it's here whether we like it or not so in this respect now, this is why we have combined the Semiosalong event with the opening of the ISI in Olomots, because Semiosalong, the ongoing uh, originally Tartu semiotic salon, is going to be the main arm of the ISI. It's, a, it's, it's an ongoing salon, which originally started in 2011 as an in-person salon in Tartu in the dingy basements and bars of Tartu, but which in 2020 was forced to move online and We've retained, despite the fact of the pandemic having seemingly receded, we have retained the online format because what we noticed was that the majority of our viewers were indeed internationals. And thus, as you can see, uh, the number of online participants actually outnumbers the number of uh, in-person participants. And thus, if you are a member of any uh, university department or, or semiotics association, whether national or international, we encourage you and implore you uh, to get involved in the semi-osalong and to propose uh, future presenters, certainly to like and follow the uh, semi-osalong Facebook page as well as the ISI Facebook page and update us. If you have an upcoming event, send us your information because this is actually the primary role of the ISI. And further, I'll simply conclude that we also feel that the revitalization of the humanities, that is, uh, philosophy and literature, et cetera, is also doubly pressing in the face of this accelerating technologies of information and communication and the sort of fetishization of computational approaches and uh, natural science approaches to what were formerly the province of the humanities. And so we see also the role of the ISI to, to, um, to revitalize the humanities in this way. So once again, I just want to thank deeply uh, all of the speakers today and all of the institutions that made it possible, Dr. Ero Tarasti, uh, Dr. Mar uh, Dario Martinelli, and Israel Chavez, who will be speaking, who will be uh, resuming the semiosa long session in about 10 minutes. So now we're gonna take a 10 minute break. We'll put back on the music. You can help us, for those of you who are in person here, you can help us drink the rest of the alcohol in the, in the break room. And then in 10 minutes, we'll start again and we will have uh, Dr. Montagnola, who's with us now, who will give the first talk in the Semiosalong series, which is going to have uh, three or four more sessions after this one. But Israel will tell you more about it in, in about 10 minutes. So thank you again to everyone who's come. I didn't expect that. Thank <laughs> you. 